Okay, um, so hello everyone. Thank you all for coming. The title of my talk is called uh, React Remixed. Uh, let me just plug this thing. Okay. So before anything else, let me introduce myself. I am Daniel Afonso. I'm currently working as a developer advocate for Alex Group. Uh, work, I'm an Altier ambassador. I'm an Eged IO instructor. And you can find me on Twitter and any social network at the handle Daniel GC Afonso. So First things first, one thing that is important to mention is OLX Group, which is where I'm working for. Um, we are not just OLX, it's important to mention that we are a, uh, a group that has more than 20 brands here in Poland. Some that are fam uh, might be more familiar are things like Automoto and, uh, for instance, as Obido. So, yeah. What is this talk about? Let's get more into the technical part of this. This talk is about things like web fetch API, HTML forms, form data objects, URL, and headers. Now, you might be asking, isn't the title of the talk React Remixed? Yeah, because we'll get there a bit. So, Remix is pretty much uh, known as a new JS framework, mostly tied in with React. Now, we are all a bit tired of new frameworks coming up for JavaScript every week or so. Um, yeah, that's something that seems to be happen. But one thing that I really like about Remix and that, well, com made me end up building this talk is that when you're learning Remix, you are accidentally learning the web. Remix was built so that you have standard, you can re reuse all the standards that have been around for the last couple of years. So where did it come from? Remix was created by Michael Jackson and Re Ryan Florence from the um, React Router team. Um, it was usually started as a, a paid license project and it was open sourced around the March last year. Um, so what is Remix, you might be wondering. Remix is known as a full stack web framework that lets you focus on the user interface, work back through the web standards and deliver a fast, sleek and resistant user experience. Besides this, Remix is known as a compiler, a server side HTTP handler, a server framework and a browser framework. When I mean it's a compiler, it, uh, by using AS build, it generates things like a server HTTP handler, a browser build and an asset manifest that can be given to your servers. It's also a server side HTTP handler because instead of being um, a server, it's a, an handler that it's built and then given to your JavaScript servers, servers. And this is great because it doesn't, it, it, um, it's independent and it can run pretty much on any other server that hosts JavaScript. It's also a server framework. So if you're familiar with things like Ruby on Rails that uses MVC, MVC um, patterns, Remix is the view and the controller and leads the, uh, leaves the model up to you to create. And it's also a browser framework. So once you, s you um, create a document that it's served to your browser, Remix will make sure to hydrate your page um, with the browser build JavaScript models. Now, this was a bit of just the technical, not the technical lingo, but the, what they claim that Remix is. Remix follows a, a philosophy that's very, well, I think friendly to be honest. It fully embraces the server client model. The thing is, you can't make your um, user and your client connection fast, but you can make your servers. So by embracing this, this type of model, Remix will make sure that the code that you're building runs fast. It works with the foundations of the web by using uh, browser HTTP and HTML. So like I said, Remix leverages things that have been working in the web for the past 20 years or so. And they have been working, they are pretty great and Remix doesn't create over abstractions to use them. You just can use them. It uses JavaScript to augment your user experience by emulating the, um, the browser behavior. This means that, well, it's kind of a kind of a fun thing to say, but you don't need JavaScript to run Remix. Y JavaScript is what it's called progressive enhancement. You can add it to your application, but in no way you need at the start that start the application with the browser running JavaScript. And finally, one of uh, one, the another up, um, philosophy is that it doesn't over abstract the underlying technologies. So what I mean by this is when you're learning frameworks, you're often used to getting to know uh, technical lingo, getting to know th things that are familiar to that framework, getting new concepts. And by leveraging the web as it has been working, Remix doesn't over abstract things. Th the way things work in Remix is the way that things work on the web. They just give it up to you to use. So before jumping in a, a small demo, 
let's just see the three main concepts that are important to getting to look at the code and understanding any code built to remix. The first thing is nested routing. So, what is nested routing? Nested routing is pretty much the general idea that um, you can couple segments of the URL to define your compon component hierarchy in the UI. What I mean by this, I have an image here, let me just grab what of what up. So what I mean what I mean by this is let's look at this uh, URL. We have a user profile and we have a user account. Um, in this application we can see that well at the beginning we have the user, then we have a profile and the account. And each tab, so we have the profile tab and we have an, an account tab. Each of each one of these tabs will be represented as something in the route. So here we see that the profile and then we see the account. And when we use nested routing, the prof when we um, access the profile URL, this will be represented in the UI in a nested profile page. When we choose an account, this will be reflected in the UI in the nested account page that's part of the account. So you understand this a bit better when we go to the demo, but this is pretty much the general concept of nested routing. Okay, so another concept. We are often used to using use effect, using React query, using SWR to do data fetching or mutations in, uh, in the web in general with React. The thing is, well, once again, use effect is specific to React. Um, React query is a library, so you have to learn new stuff, and SWR is another library. With Remix, it makes it a bit much easier to do. First thing that's important to note is that Remix allows you to run code on the server. So your code will be run on the server. You can use it to fetch your data and then send your data back to the your application. So the first concept that we need to know about doing data loading is by using a loader. So this snippet doesn't show pretty quick here, but what the loader does, it's a function that will be run on your server side when yep, your uh, component loads. This will be responsible for doing certain things. In this scenario, we can use it to fetch data. And then, in our component, we have a custom hook here um, that is called use loader data that you can use so that when your component is rendered on your, webs on your web page, by using that custom hook, it will get the data that Remix fetched, fetched on the server side and render it in on, your, on your component. And this is how data loading works. For performing mutations, it's pretty much similar. Instead of loaders, we have actions. And actions allow you, well, to run an action. One thing that it's important to know is that Remix leverages the web, like I said previously. And by leveraging the web, you can use stuff like forms. So forms are, are what we traditionally did mutations on the web for the last couple of years until, well, it, React came up, Vue came up, and the new patterns. By using forms, we can create a post, we can define a method like post, put, delete, whatever. And whenever this method is triggered by your browser, then Remix will run your action. And when you run your action, it will be responsible for, well, performing your mutation. In this scenario, we are, have a form that will define the post. And whenever we, s we select our form, then it will trigger our, our action on the server side to do our mutation. And yeah, with this concept, I think I can show a bit of code of how this is working. So I'm going to try to do a live demo. Let's hope everything works. Uh, okay. Okay, let me just close this stuff. Okay, we are seeing the, yeah, cool. So here, let me just introduce what we are be seeing. We're going to see uh, an application that it's built on top of a remix stack. I'll tell you a bit more of stacks af afterwards. But it's pretty much just grasping a concept of a, a comic uh, book run by Mark Wade in the early 2000s that it's called Tower of Babel. It's from Justice League, it's pretty much just a concept where Batman had uh, a list of weaknesses for all members of Justice League. And this is pretty much what we are going to be building in this scenario. So first things first, there are a couple of things already pre-baked in. This is an application that already has um, authentication. So we already are authenticated on top of there. This is because, well, Batman wants to be secure. So he doesn't, he wants to make sure that no one has access to his list. Um, so but the first thing that we want to do is to make sure that we have access to our heroes list. And we have a nav bar on the, um, on the right side, left side, sorry, on the left side where we want to list our heroes. So the first thing that we need to do is to do some type of data fetching. 
So like I said and showed in the presentation, to do some data fe fetching we are going to be using a loader. So one thing that is important is that loaders need to be exported so that Remix knows to, to use them. We are using TypeScript so let's just type this so it knows that this is going to be a loader function. And I forgot, okay. So by having this it immediately Remix will know okay this function needs to be run, run when this component is supposed to be loading. So what do we do first things first? We want to do a data, a data fetch request to get our heroes list. So one thing that is important and I mentioned previously is that there, uh, there is an authenticated user. And so that we make sure that our, we get our authenticated user we have to get access to that user. I have a pre-built function already just to make it easier so that I can get our user ID to do data fetching in the database. So this is a function that is going to be requiring our user ID and this to get our user ID we are going to be needing the request that it is currently being sent um, in part of our um, payload. So Remix gives you access to that by using a loader function you can have access to the request that it is being sent in your payload. Okay so we pass our request here this is an asynchronous function so I need to wait and we need to type this as asynchronous. Uh, not a lot, a wait. And now we have our user ID so we can do fetching to get our heroes. So just to get the heroes, and wait, get heroes. And this is a function that it's going to be receiving our user ID. And now that we have this, we can return a JSON payload. So this it's important to know that everything that we return from here needs to be an um an HTTP response. So in this scenario um we need to confirm okay we got the data and we are sending it back to you. So JSON is pretty much a function that Remix pre-built that I can show you here. That pretty much just, just returns a 302 uh, with the data that it found. So that when the browser picks it up it knows to parse it and get the data. So we are going to return this with a water data typing and in here we are going to be sending our heroes. Okay and now we are returning this. Now we just need to make sure that this data is accessible on the UI because right now we are not seeing it here yet. So here is why we leverage the custom hook that Remix gives you which is the use loader data. So it will make sure that it will pick up the data that comes from your loader. So we get our data, use loader data. Just to make sure that TypeScript recognizes, let's enforce this. And yeah, now we have our data and we can pass it to our nav bar. And if I did this well, this should be working. Yeah. So now we fetch the data, we re return the response to 302, and Remix picked it up, sent it back to the component, and now it's being listed here. You can see that now we have Batman showing up on the nav bar. Now, one thing that is just missing in here is that if we click it we still cannot see it. And this is where we are going to be starting to getting to use the nested routing. So I don't know if you can see from there but as you can see here we have a route which is heroes and then we have an ID. This is pretty much the ID that is inserted in the database for this record. So we need to make sure that whenever we select this hero we can display it. Um, so how do we do this? We want to make sure that this hero is displayed inside of this container in here. Now this is a nested route. So how does this work? Well first thing we define our heroes route in here. So inside of routes, fo routes folder we define that in everything inside of the routes that has uh, heroes defined in this scenario the route heroes everything inside of it uh, will be sent to our ID page. One, you can see that we already have an index here. This is pretty much what, what we want to display whenever we get to our page. Well, if we walk into the page, it's still not here because we are missing something. We need to tell our component that it needs to render a nested route inside of it. And how do we do this? By using an outlet. Pretty much, is an outlet is a component that Remix will you know that it needs to be used to render something that it's nested inside of that route. So now, if we go in here, we already have our index showing up by default. Um, so now that we have this default nested route, let's just defi uh, define a route that we want to use to create and to show the, bat the data from Batman. So 
we are at the FR route here we have our index but this is going to be a scenario that it's not always going to be matching the route that we want as you as you saw it had the route matched heroes and then we had the ID of a hero. So here what we want to create is defining a dynamic route. It's a route that well it's dynamic it depends on the ID it will show the same thing for everything that matches that pattern but um but by, uh, by default it won't be triggered unless you match that uh, route. So here what we do is we create something that it's called a slug. So here this slug will pretty much say that everything inside of the route heroes that is not um, contained inside of the heroes folder will match this route. So it will pick up that ID and uh, use it. So let's just create this component first things first. Export default. Let's just give it a random name here. Let's just build default here east. And this component, what we want to do, uh, okay, okay. Uh, messed up. Let's just do this and export default afterwards. Eurovist. So now what we want to, uh, 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 I messed up. Okay, I'm just, let me do something different. Instead of doing arrow function, let's just do a standard function and wrap this up from the start. So now we can export it. So now here what we want to render is our hero. Right now we don't have anything here. Let's just get our component here, what's going to be responsible for showing our hero so we have a hero component that already is pre-built that has just the h3 and p and uh, the paragraphs to display our data. Uh, so here we want to display this. Uh, right now this doesn't have anything but it should be rendered if we select Batman. What it's missing, oh it's not having the data that it needs. So now we have the route we need to make sure that we fetch the data once again and show it here. So how do we do this? By creating another loader. So const loader loader function and the process is very similar to the other one so I can just copy it for the sake of time. We're going to be wanting the, the user ID because well we're going to be getting that data from the database that's as assigned to this user. Uh, so here we need our request. This needs to be asynchronous. Uh, need to import this. And now we need we need to get another thing, which is the ID that's defined. Now this doesn't come on a request. It comes on the um, another parameter here that it's defined. That is, oops, uh, 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 I lost it in here. It's R R R R. Wait, there's something missing. Export const user ID. The request data function is not assigned. Just having some small technical issues here, but it's going to be fixed. It's reacting here. Sorry. Oh yes, thank you, thank you. So yeah, now we have the request here, but wait, let me just double check it. Yeah, we have the request, so we should have the request here. I can show it. Why is it throwing an error? Because this is not a water func, it is a water function, but it's not being imported. It's being imported from the wrong spot. Let me just, yeah, sorry for this delay. Okay, so now we have the request. Thank you for the help. Um, and now all we need is to make sure that we have access to our parameters. So these are the parameters that are going to be sent through our URL. So one thing that we're uh, going to be using is, is we define this slug to be, where is it, hero ID. We're going to make sure that we have access to it by having the parameters use uh, hero ID. What, one thing that we need to make sure is that if we need to access a route that it's being well shown, it's something that it exists. So we're just going to be using a, a small package that it's invariant to make sure that if the hero ID doesn't arrive we're going to be sending it, uh, an error. So here we're going to be passing the parameters, hero ID, hero ID, hero ID not defined. Just in, in, in scenario that this doesn't exist. Okay, so now that we have this we can get our data. So we can get our hero from the get hero function, 
get hero by ID. Here we're going to pass it our user ID as we defined previously and our hero ID and our ID. In here, we're going to be getting our parameters dot hero ID. Okay, so now that this is done, let's just return a JSON once again with our data in here where we show our hero. Okay, not the hero, hero, okay. So now, once again, we have the same process as previously. Let me just copy it once again for the sake of time. We get the loader data. We need to import it. This is not type T for some reason. And now we're going to be passing what is this expected to receive, a hero component. So here we're going to be sending our data dot hero. And now this should work. If it doesn't work, okay. Now we have secret identity undefined, undefined. So there's something missing in the data. Let me just double check if we are getting it. Uh, hero, hero, data dot hero. Okay, here we can just console log this just for sake, just to see if it shows up. So now, as we can see, we're getting an object and it's coming undefined, uh, empty. So for some reason, this is not being returned. Let me just double check. We get the data from the hero ID. Oh. This isn't a singles function. We just, I just forgot to wait for it. So now, yeah, now we are showing our hero. So now that we have been uh, creating, uh, showing heroes, let's just go to the last step of this, which is creating them. Now this is where we're going to be displaying forms. So to use a form, let's just create a, a new, a new nested route called new. This is going to be. Let's do this very quick. So once again, support default function, new hero. And in here, we're going to be showing our component, which is the hero creator. Now, this hero creator needs to be inside of a form because this is how Remix handles data mutations. So, so for us to get this form, we just get the component from Remix, which is the form component. And we say that we want to do, to do something when there's a method. In this scenario, we want to do this whenever there's a post. We want to trigger our action. So, post in here. Uh, and now if I go to this route in new here, we should be able to see this form. Okay. So now we have the form in here. Now we just need to make sure that whenever we press save, our data is processed and sent back to our actions to perform this. So this is where we're going to be creating an action in, in Remix. The syntax is go once again going to be very similar, so but instead of being a loader, it's going to be an action. So just what to do here, instead of being a loader, we define an action and then we define an action function in here. In this scenario, we just need a request, we don't need the parameters, we need the required user ID, yes. And now we need to get our form data. How do we get our form data? By as ac like doing it in the web previously, by accessing the, um, the form data that is returned from our data. So how is this done? Const form data. We access our request. In our request, we should be having our, our form data in here. This is a promise, so we need to wait for it. And now that we have our form data, we can get the parameters that we need here. So here we need a name, which is a parameter that comes from the form. Just to be sure, we need a name, we need a secret identity, and we need a weakness. So we get the name. Oops. We get the name. We get the secret identity. And we get the weakness. And now, with, with this done, we can call another function, which is our function called uh, hero. Let me just double check. Add, no, let me just look at my model here. This is weakness. Delete, delete, no, no, create hero. So this is the function that we need. And this function will be responsible for creating our hero. This function receives our name. It's going to be the name. Let me just do something because it's expecting string. Uh, it respects the secret identity. It's going to be the secret identity of the hero. A string it expects a weakness. It's going to be weakness as string. And finally, the user ID because we don't want to be creating this for another authenticated user. 
Okay, so now our function should be created and we should, our data should be created and sent to the database. Now, once we submit a form, we don't want to keep seeing our form, our created form. So, what we do here, it's leverage another function created by Remix, which is called redirect. So, this function will be pretty much sending um, a redirect header whenever you return a response. So, by doing this, you send our redirect. And now we want to re redirect this to the heroes route and to the um, to the dynamic ID which is going to be the ID of the created hero. So here we're just kind of getting our hero ID. And if everything is working properly, let's just get something else here. Like we have a use loader data, we have the use um, action which is a custom hook that gives you just access to the, um, the data that this function returns just in case there's an error. In here, so we get this uh, action data and we just send it in here. This is expecting action data, it's going to be data. Okay, so let's hope this works at first. Now we have our form to create our hero. Let's just add a new name, let's put Superman, Clark Kent, Kryptonite. So if we save, yeah. So it sent the data back to the server. The action processed the data. You got it from the form data. It, it was inserted in the, in the database, and it sent a, a 301 uh, header to redirect it back to this page. Um, and yeah, this is pretty much just the standard stuff that we can do with Remix. Um, before wrapping up this live demo, one thing that it's important to mention and that I, and that I already showed, which is if I just go here. Uh, um, I open on the right spot. If I just go in here, it's down there. If I just disable JavaScript, you can see that everything is still working and I can still add a bunch of stuff because like I said, JavaScript is progressive enhancement. You don't need it to run your application. So just to wrap up very quickly, one thing that's important to know is that Remix gives you a bunch of stacks, either the Grunge, Indie, or the Blue stacks. These are all defined by the Remix team and give you access to places to deploy different uh, types of databases, um, different testing tools. So you can use all of these to create a Remix application. And compared with Next, just to wrap up right now, Remix. Um, this was an, an uh, experimentation that was done by the Remix team and the Versal team. They got to the conclusion that Remix is as fast or faster than at serving static content, static pages. It's faster at serving dyna dynamic content be because this uh, doesn't use uh, server side generation behind. It enables a faster user experience, even on slow networks. Automatically handles race conditions, it, which is something that I didn't have the time to show you, but it's super great. And their build times are nearly instant. So, thank you so much. Uh, th this was a bumpy road, but uh, if you have any questions, I'll be I'll be around. Feel free to to reach out. Um, yeah, I'm Daniel Alfonso, and thank you.